Okay, maybe a question um, for both of you. How do you like the new cover gallery? Wow, this cover gallery is fantastic. <laughs> it's really fantastic. And we like it and people love it. So, how did this uh, come about, this collaboration between uh, Fondation Vera and Carlo Foundation? Well, you know, since Sam became director here, uh, we've been having this discussion about how can our two foundations collaborate? How can there be a shared vision and where do we overlap? And um, eventually, we came upon this idea of having a permanent Calder Gallery. And what a great idea. Um, and then conceptually, so that it's always fresh and alive, there's going to be different curated experiences. And this is Theodora, she's the grand first <laughs> presenter. Um, and, and this, well, you should talk about the presentation. Yeah, um, how did you select the works for this presentation? We did it closely together because um, I could go to this archive, to this Kohler Foundation. They have a fantastic archive of the, all the works, which is really almost unique. And um, we were talking about which period or which moment in Kohler's career, Kohler's work, is, would be wonderful to start with. And this. Um, then we came up with this time around 1930 and the 40s. And the other and primary basis was that um, this gallery is uh, in honor of Mary Calderoa, which is the younger daughter of Alexander Calder. And she died last year and she made a huge donation to the Calder Foundation and so we started to look at the works in this donation and so um, most of these works in the first gallery installation are from the donation. Yeah, I have to say that's really gratifying that um, my mother's genius really to leave, she left her entire collection of her Calder works to the Calder Foundation uh, which is 1,103 works of art, which is tremendous. Um, so personally, I'm very, very happy that the gallery represents mm -hmm. her intent and um, not just her father, my grandfather's genius, but also it's very personal. And Theodora did a beautiful installation that's intimate and personal and um, also vigorous, you know, and intentional. Um, and it spans quite, actually, it's quite a range because the, yeah. the last work, which is the first work right above your head coming in, this, this large black mobile is from Calder's last year, 1976. So it begins in October 1930 and ends in 1976. So it's, a, it's actually a spectrum, mostly 30s and 40s works. But what, um, for example, in this room, you really can experience and which is not so so well known that um, Calder's work are not uh, just a playful mobiles and um, things moving but it's um, first uh, incredibly um, um, courageous deed to include to bring into the art movement and to um, produce through movement volumes and space. And this is something which you can experience here. This performative aspect is something which you can experience in this gallery in a, in a very beautiful way. So um, this is the first installation, but there are others to come. Yeah, the, the concept is one, not keep it so dogmatic, but also to have it fresh and uh, reinvigorated. So um, I think in January or so, we're going to have another Byler Foundation curator come with a new concept, a rigorous curatorial view. We have no idea what it is yet. We haven't even begun with the idea. And then curate um, a collection from the foundation and maybe even borrowed works from other places towards the view. Um, I, has Sam even told us who the curator is for the next one? I don't yeah, not know. Not yet. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so it's exciting because it's not something, we don't plan it out four years in advance, we just keep it very light, very fresh, and it gives it a chance to breathe. 
So by next Basel, of course, by the next art fair, it'll be an entirely different uh, collection. Um, and people who came now and got a chance to see that. So over a period of years, there'll be a tremendous um, expression of Calder works. Also, Theodora uh, wonderfully made this first um, publication. It's like a newspaper. So she set the format for um, each installation to come will have its own newspaper. So you have this collection of newspaper over years that'll tell the entire story of the collaboration. And um, there should, there'll be hundreds of works over time that are, that are <laughs> exhibited. So it's really going to be fantastic. <laughs> One thing I would also like to underline what um, for the foundation is so wonderful with the Calder Gallery that it gives us the opportunity to make a very strong and powerful link connection with the, with the collection which um, gives us also the opportunity to look with new eyes, with different eyes, onto um, the works, onto some group of works of the collection. And this is fantastic for such a museum. Um, maybe something about the Carter Foundation. Um, can you tell us a little bit who founded it and when was it founded yeah, and sure. what's the mission? Let me just add to what Theodora said for one yeah. second because um, it's an incredible. I mean, she curated the Kuhn show, she curated the Calder Room, she curated the first four galleries of the permanent collection. So it's a really nice moment for Theodora and for all of us, obviously. But um, in terms of this, this issue of the Calders and the relationship to the permanent collection, sometimes we have the incredible advantage um, of discovering. I didn't know the Mondrian painting. So Calder and Mondrian were very um, attached, very, very. Um, uh, interest and amused by each other, very different, and yet they had certain sem uh, resonances, mm -hmm. I'll call it. Um, and so Theodora presented a painting of 1912, I think, uh, by Mondrian, which is an abstraction of a eucalyptus tree. And then also presented a mobile called Eucalyptus by Calder, 1940. And just this, the titles are not actually that Im important. If you look at the two works of art in reference to each other, it's this little mini lesson in art history with Mondrian, there's all this implied motion, and then Calder freeze motion. That's his contribution, that's his genius, is activating space. So the space becomes really more the subject than anything. And seeing the Mondrian and seeing the Calder together is really, really fantastic. And um, Sam had the, the brilliance, of course, to put these two eucalyptus works of art into the Byler Foundation booth in the art fair um, as an explanation of what's going on here. So it's really nice. It's all, it just all feels, it has a kind of harmony that you don't expect that frequently. So the Calder Foundation, um, I started the Calder Foundation in 1987 and my intention was to one, create a small foundation that was able to change and be amorphous and um, deal with issues as they came up and take a new leadership role in a different direction and expand and be creative. Um, but it, it, it all comes back to the same question. How do our activities relate to Calder's legacy? How are we honoring his legacy? How are we protecting his legacy? So whether it's through issues of intellectual property and copyright violations and things like that, or whether it's working with a great museum or foundation in collaboration and making a, a huge retrospective or some great intimate collaboration like this one we have. Well, you know, there's this funny thing, which is um, hopefully people will enter this gallery and have a transformative moment through this new portal. I mean, this, this is a new door. It never existed before. This was, the organization of the museum was quite different before. Um, this was one of the changing exhibition galleries, and now it's been uh, excerpted from that group of galleries with a new opening. I think it's fantastic that you can come into the middle of the museum and have an opportunity. You can go left into the permanent collection, you can go straight into the um, temporary exhibition, you can go right into the Calder Gallery, and it gives you all these options immediately. You can easily map out where you're going to go and, and, enjoy, and enjoy everything. Um, the fact that Theodora made the Kuhn show, um, it's really kind of astonishing to me. Um, I, I still can't quite believe it. So many people have said to me, a number of people have said mm -hmm. to me, um, the Calder Gallery is so, 
and so beautiful, ephemeral, spiritual. It's an antidote to the Jeff Koons show, this, this plastic trash. And, um, and I, I let them express themselves. And then I remind them that in the 1930s, people said precisely the same thing about Calder. That when you present something new that's also challenging, um, you know, people are upset. It's very upsetting. So I always remind them, well, go back into Coons after you experience the Calder Gallery with a new idea. I mean, this is, Calder's all part of our vocabulary now, but it wasn't part of our vocabulary in the 1920s and the 1930s. It was really, really radical sculpture at a time when sculpture was bronze and marble and clay and solid. So using the space, even the sculpture behind us, it occupies space. Without the space, it doesn't exist. Space is part of the work of art. And that is something that was beyond a lot of people in the 1930s to understand.